Adore is a monster-taming roguelite. Yeah, I said monster-taming. You have the power to summon and control creatures to fight for you. The main character, Luca, doesn't fight at all, so you must rely on your team of creatures. It's so creative, but let's review what the early access status of Adore is. There's a little introduction, and then you're dead. Lucky for you, Draknar, the god of creatures, revives you, determined to have you find the sources of a curse and eliminate it once and for all, creating the premise for roguelike mechanics. You're free to come back to life as many times as Draknar allows. Anyway, while dead, you're in the home base. This is where you can use a portal to return back to life into the monster-filled world. If the world is filled with monsters, what are you going to do to protect yourself? Attack them? Nope. The main character, Luca, doesn't attack themselves. You must use your staff to tame one of the monsters, which seems to store it inside the staff. Then you can call it out to attack the other creatures. At first, the combat is tricky, since you need to focus on Luca so they don't take damage. Then you have to summon your pet and aim them at an enemy so your attacks land. You also need to worry about your stamina, since it's used to summon a pet, recall the pet, and dodge. If you're rolling around too much, you won't have the energy left to summon your pet. Controlling two things at once is always a bit difficult until you get the hang of it, the enemies do give you enough time to get into a safe spot with Luca before you line up your attack. The combat is more about small, quick attacks. I wish there was a time shift mechanic though, a slight pause where you could line up the attack without worrying about getting attacked yourself. It, that would be great. My biggest question around the combat is what's it going to be like to control multiple pets? Is the player going to have a stable of monsters that are useful for different situations? Or will they send out all the pets to attack at the same time? What kind of stamina is that going to take? I have trouble answering these because the game is quite difficult now, and I haven't unlocked a second pet slot. You also need to be careful and keep your monster pet alive. If your pet dies, then you'll also take damage. So if there are no more monsters to tame and your pet dies, then you'll die too, since you can't attack. It's a little rough on bosses, because if you enter with low pet health, you're in trouble. Even worse is that you only have so much taming energy. There are orbs in the top left of the screen that are used for three different things. First, they are your taming energy. Each time you tame a monster, it uses one up. So this means you're not going to be swapping pets often. Second, each time you pick up an orb, you're able to choose an upgrade. These are for you and increase your speed, stamina, or health. All of them are important. Speed is useful for boss battles. Stamina is excellent so you can summon more. And health is always a good idea. You do not lose the effect of the orb if you use it elsewhere. Last, the orbs are spent on upgrading your current pet. You spend them at Draknar shrines during the run. But the upgrades are a little confusing. Some work needs to be done to make them more understandable. Also, it seems like the upgrades rely on having multiple pets, which I haven't gotten yet. So the map you're fighting on is in a bunch of small arenas that you're locked into until you kill all the enemies. You're searching for the boss that will let you get to the next area. Keep in mind, a door enables you to teleport around the map. Thanks, developer. That's very generous. Use it to explore the entire level before taking on the boss so you can upgrade as much as possible. There are shops where you buy items, keys, health pots, that kind of stuff with the coins that drop. Also, green parts drop. Those are used in your home base to unlock upgrades. The first one being the ability to slow down time while a pet is active. Now, I'm not really sure I see the utility there, but it points to one of those roguelike games where you'll grind at the game to be more powerful. 
Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just one style of rogue light. Overall, a door is a little rough around the edges, but the base is fantastic. The theme is unique and exciting too. They definitely need to tweak the gameplay to make it a little more fair for the player, but I'm excited to see where they go. Thank you, thank you. A door is starting off strong, but it has some way to go. But what should I play next? Thank you very much for watching, and uh, hit subscribe now.